Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is seen as a high potential destination for the production of green hydrogen and green hydrogen derivatives. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about some of the emerging opportunities. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Why is South Africa seen as a good place to produce green hydrogen? Mostly because South Africa has the key ingredients to produce green hydrogen competitively. We've got solar and wind resources that are more potent than, on, than in most other countries in the world. And we've got an abundance of land and you need land in order to put these uh, solar and wind generators up. And then you know, the fourth ingredient, which is the, the water. We are a water stressed country, but this doesn't seem to be coming out as a binding constraint. One, we're going to be using much less water in our electricity sector as we transition out of coal fired generation, which is very water thirsty. And then we've also got uh, the ability to, to maybe overscale uh, where as we set up electrolyzers uh, to overscale uh, the wind and, uh, and solar to also desalinate either seawater or mine, acid mine water. So we have those ingredients in abundance, which a number of other countries that are, that are pursuing green hydrogen aggressively just don't have. Does the country have a hydrogen strategy? At the moment, there's no real formal hydrogen strategy, but been working on hydrogen from a science and technology perspective for a number of years now. This was initially driven very much from our platinum endowment. So we were looking at the fact that fuel cells uh, have platinum inside them, but there's been a shift. We're really now looking at the fact that we have these compar competitive advantages in terms of renewable energy, in terms of land, and we, we now need to go through a process of really commercializing that opportunity, not only in the electricity sector, where we know there's going to be a big transition away from coal towards a renewables led system, but actually having a, an oversized electricity system, renewable energy system, so that we can start producing green hydrogen, because we know that there's a number of countries in Europe in particular, but also Japan, where they, they are looking to use green hydrogen in their hard to abate sectors. Those sectors like marine freight, heavy uh, long haul land freight, green steel, uh, green uh, cement, uh, fertilizer, green ammonia. So we can see that a lot of countries are looking at this, but they don't have the resources that South Africa has, the natural resources uh, and the competitive advantages that South Africa has naturally to produce green hydrogen. So they're going to be uh, needing to import green hydrogen in some form either directly or as a derivative. What are some of the opportunities that are being assessed? Yes, so it's early days yet, but we already can see that there's uh, some green shoots in this green hydrogen space. We know that Sassel, for instance, uh, it really is a major producer of hydrogen, of gray hydrogen. So they produce their hydrogen from coal. It's a, a very carbon intensive process, which makes Secunda one of the biggest single site carbon emitters in the world. So they need to transition very aggressively, but they do have uh, an asset base that use, uses hydrogen. So if they can thrift or shift out or displace that gray hydrogen, uh, which is very uh, pollutant with um, uh, green hydrogen, that's an obvious place to start. And we are seeing there's a, there's a very specific strategy there to start uh, producing green hydrogen and then starting to use that green hydrogen to produce carbon neutral jet fuel. So that's a, that's a big opportunity. Uh, and that jet fuel is likely to receive a premium in the market as uh, uh, aviation companies recover from COVID and uh, climate change and climate mitigation becomes a key priority. And as I say, that won't be necessarily direct sales of green hydrogen or exports. It is a difficult product to, to export. There will be some of that. We know that it does make pipelines brittle. So you have to, when they inject hydrogen into existing pipelines with natural gas, they have to keep those ratios at a certain level so that there isn't this embrittlement. But that infrastructure will change over time and the, the, the ability to transport uh, green hydrogen or hydrogen will improve. But I think South Africa is looking at a number of opportunities to export uh, green hydrogen in derivative products. So for instance, we see an e-methanol plan emerging in the Eastern Cape we see that we also domestically looking to use green hydrogen in fuel cells. So there's a whole uh, hydrogen corridor plan linking the platinum mines up in the north, of, uh, down the, the N3 
uh, as a sort of a, as a green hydrogen corridor to really as a test case. So we're starting to see a number of these uh, early stage projects starting to be spoken about. I'm sure there are many, many more, but another very big opportunity for South Africa, I think, is in direct reduced green uh, iron produced from hydrogen. And why this is an opportunity is that we actually have a mothball plant down in Saldana Bay. It's the Arcelormittal plant uh, uh, that could be converted to using green hydrogen. And we already see the parent company, Arcelormittal Group, uh, entered into an agreement with the Spanish government this week uh, where they're going to start really rolling out a green direct reduced iron plant in, in a part of Spain and using that uh, uh, along with the recycled material in a, in a rolling in a mill, uh, also in Spain to become the first sort of a green steel plant uh, uh, in the world. The rest of the electricity will, at that plant as well will be used uh, using renewable energy. So the fact that there is this mothballed plant in Saldana Bay, this opportunity to pr pr produce hydrogen-based uh, DRI, and the fact that there's this link to the Osman Metal, Metal Group internationally, which is pursuing the strategy in Europe already, seems that, uh, that seems to also be an obvious place to, to look at. What funding support is available for hydrogen-linked projects? Well, this is definitely a nascent industry, so we've got some way to go. But the good news here is that there's definitely more and more funding uh, opportunity in this area. We know that the Europeans are pursuing this massive Green New Deal and, we, and they know that they can't produce all the green hydrogen they're going to demand in the future. So they're looking at dif different jurisdictions to produce this green hydrogen and looking to fund it. Already we've seen the German government enter the South African space. Uh, they're looking at South Africa, Morocco, Namibia, and uh, specifically in South Africa, uh, the development bank in Germany has set aside 200 million euro for initial projects in South Africa to produce green hydrogen or green hydrogen derivatives or to showcase the ability to start shifting out uh, gray hydrogen with green hydrogen. So that's a that's a, an immediate funding opportunity. But there are others. We know that the, the Industrial Development Corporation has been given a specific green hydrogen mandate by the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition. So that's important. But I think more and more private funders will be looking at this. Uh, there's, there's definitely uh, while this might have been a constraint in the past, I think that funding is not going to be the main constraint. I think South Africa needs to build up a, a co coherent and a competitive project pipeline. And we're still at the very early stages of that. But I think we need to get these bankable projects onto the radar of uh, the international investors because there is climate finance available. There's also commercial finance available as, uh, as uh, the market looks to uh, embed green hydrogen. And there's an opportunity initially also for premiums to be paid for some of these products. So that, so South Africa is in a sweet spot. There's uh, the sun, the wind, the land. Uh, we do have water if we desalinate it. And we're in a sweet spot as well as the world looks desperately hungry for this product and is willing to fund it. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.